What's going on YouTube? It's your man Cleveland Terry. Today we're going to be talking about the most underutilized plugin that Serato offers. Today we're going to be talking about Serato Flip. Let's do it. So I know this isn't a new plugin. I know this plugin has been around for a little while. However, it's the one plugin that I use that every time I show one of my DJ friends, one of my boys, they always say the same thing. Oh, it does that? I didn't know that it did that. Serato Flip is basically a sequencer. It's basically recording the sequences, the steps involved in whatever you're trying to do. So I'm gonna nerd out for a minute. If you've ever used anything like Microsoft or Visual Basic, you'll know that all the Visual Basic is doing is recording the actions that you're setting for. When I press this button, I want this page to come up. I want this page to shrink down to this much. And I want you to pull up Internet Explorer. And when you hit that one button, it's going to then play all those actions in the order that you recorded them, you set them. So Serato Flip is a lot like that. It's basically taking all your actions, all the things that, that you want to do and recording them into a sequence of events. So then when you hit one button, instead of hitting 12 buttons, it's gonna do all those actions for you. So in the case of DJing, let's say you're playing a song and you're thinking, it would be really, really cool if I had an intro or it'd be really, really cool if I had an outro beat. Well, with Serato Flip, instead of you hitting that button every time, every every four, four beats or every two bars, it's gonna do it for you. And then that way you can actually have a perfect intro, outro, remix, anything you want, and it's gonna be there for you. When Serato Flip first came out, that's kind of how they marketed it. It was a way to flip your mixes, to flip your songs. So a lot of people were using it as a, almost a beat production tool. You know, they were making beats because it was recording the action. So if you had a song, let's say you had a Despacito and it's like doom, da doom, 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 da doom, doom. Well, you could take that beat and then flip it up and go doom, doom, da doom, doom, da doom, da doom, da doom, da doom, da doom, da doom. And it would record those actions and save them in the file. Now, the good news is, is it's not locked into, it's not locked into the song. It is a version of the song, which means you can have the original, you can have a remix, you can have a secondary remix, and a third remix, depending on where you are. So, as I said before, it was made kind of, they were, they were really advertising it as a production tool. That's extreme cases. And I think that's why people don't use it as much because they thought it was more of a remix tool. But it's not just about a remix tool, it's more about workflow and it's about creating a workflow that works for you depending on where you are. So some of the uses for Serato Flip. Basics, okay, obviously, yeah. Flipping remixes, that's cool. Another way is to uh, make outros and intros. So you have a song you, you bought from, you know, iTunes or Amazon and it doesn't have an intro. Well, you can go to the end of that song or wherever there is an instrumental part of the beat, set a cue point for that, for that part and then record the song starting with the ending and let it play from the ending into the first hook or the first verse. Another way that you can use Flip, which I think is probably one of the coolest things is you can edit your own dirty songs. So let's say for instance, you go on DJ City, you go on to Beat Junkies and there's a hot new record that's out and you go to download it and you look for a clean version and they don't have a clean version yet. Well, now you can take that dirty version, censor all the bad words, save that file, and now you have a clean version. More importantly, you have a clean version and a dirty version with one file. So now you're no longer creating duplicates of your music and you're, you know, filling up your hard drive with a whole bunch of useless stuff. One track with two different versions. The other way, the other way that it's really, really cool is, let's say for instance, a record came out and it was really, really hot in the beginning. So when it's hot in the beginning, you're playing first verse, second verse, uh, probably mixing out on, on the bridge or mixing out on, on, the, on the second hook. Sometimes songs only get good at certain parts of the song. So in the case of like Drake's track, God's Plan, well, in the beginning, obviously you play that song, everybody's gonna flow through that whole song. Everybody's gonna be rapping that whole song all the way through the only love my bed and my mama and then, they, and then it gets hype, right? Well, as the song gets older and older, they're not gonna wanna sing that first verse. That's gonna annoy them and they're gonna walk off the dance floor. But what if you could have the intro and then you just jump to the second verse? 
And if you don't have to think about it, you're then a better DJ because you can keep thinking about the songs you wanna play after that. And it'll flow really, really well. And people will just think, wow, this dude's just got it going on. But I don't wanna just talk about, um, I don't wanna just talk about it. I kinda wanna show you what I'm talking about. So let's head over to the studio and let's go through it. Here we are in the studio. It's a little hot in here. I don't normally do it here because it gets a little hot and I haven't really worked out the whole setup action. So bear with me on this video. I'll get a change in the next one. But here we have a uh, DDJ SX2. I have the uh, SX2 because uh, it actually comes with flip built in. So if you buy the SX2, the SX3, uh, it'll come with flip and they'll send you a little voucher in the box and then you just go on to Serato, register it and you have Serato flip. But not only do you have it for the SX2, you have it across all of your devices because it's built into the actual software. So one purchase gives you access everywhere. Uh, the You can do Serato Flip within the software, which is, which is perfectly fine. However, I like to do it on hardware because I find the buttons to be more responsive than trying to use the number keys and all that stuff. There's always a little bit of a delay. So I prefer to have the hotkeys. We are going to be using... Um, a artist by the name of Doze and a song called Salsa. I'm using Doze because he's one of my boys and I know he's cool with having music played all over social media and uh, I don't want this thing to be pulled or flagged for whatever reason because I'm using Drake or something. So I'm gonna use Doze's Salsa. It's the dirty version. It already has an intro, but that's not really important. Um, that doesn't really matter. First couple of things to note right off the bat, when you're doing any of these types of things, it's really important that you have at least mapped out your cue points for the songs because you're gonna need those to be able to trigger those actions that I talked about earlier. So in this case, I wanna start with the intro beat and then I wanna go straight into the chorus Friday popping, you already know. and then I wanna go I want to clean up all the dirty all the dirty words in the song. And then I'll have another outro beat so I can go right into a next mix. So this one I'm going to be really, really quick, really, really easy. We're just going to do it. So what we need to do is we need to turn on the flip button. And if you have a dedicated flip controller, there will be a record button right on your screen. So we're going to hit record. And within Serato it's gonna start blinking. And that blinking means it's waiting for your first action. So you can do anything you want. You can play the song. Uh, as long as you don't hit the cue points, it's not gonna start recording. But for this case, we wanna hit the cue point first because we are starting with an intro beat. So that's where we're hitting the cue point. So in this case, we're gonna go. It's, it's, got the, um, it's got the red flashing, it's ready for action. And all I'm gonna do is a couple of options. You can either hit the cue point and then hit play to make sure it keeps going, or you can hit play and then hit the cue point signifying that you're ready to start. So for this one, I'm just gonna hit, um, I'm just gonna hit the cue point. All right, and we're going right now. Here we go. And now, as you can see, the start button is lit up, the red button is lit up, so it's actually recording everything I'm doing right now. So now I'm gonna hit the next part I wanna do it. Friday popping you already know. So now here's the thing. Now here's the thing. I already know where I wanna go next. So because it's recording actions, I don't have to play the whole song all the way through. I can stop the song and then I can skip ahead. Right to the verse. I'm gonna go back. Alright. So, bad word there. Let's back it up. We're gonna back up right now, and now, when we get to that part, um, now when we get to that part where it says a profanity, I'm gonna hit the sensor button and then it's gonna record that action. Okay, so the next part it says I don't give a F. All right, so we got bitches and give a, 
haters act like yeah, I don't give up over it. I don't give up over it. I don't, I don't give up for two step turning. I don't give up for two step turning. All right, so now all I want to do is have, have an outro. Friday popping you the outro. No, I just hit the intro button again so I can start on to the next thing. So now, from now on, I have a, you know, four bar loop. I have an outro as long as I want. And I'm gonna stop it right here. One more. Okay. So now, I'm going to hit the record button to signify that I'm done. And I'm going to save it. And now it says flip two right up top. Now it says flip two because I've actually already tried to record one, which is me, which is why there's a flip two. Um, but here's the key. When I load in salsa next time, it's actually going to highlight that there is a flip version of the song. So when I load it up, the start button becomes white, signifying that there is a flip version or multiple flip versions. So in this case, now, I hit play. Now, I hit the start button because that's telling you, telling it that you want to use the flip version and not the regular version. If you start with the cue points, it's not going to play the right version. You have to play the start version one. You can also, you can also create a, a just a custom button, like maybe on Q.5 that says when I hit that button, you're starting uh, Serato Flip also. You don't have to use that button. It's just kind of convenient because it's right there. It's lit up. It's telling you what to do. So let's use this one just so you can tell what it was going on. Now it's playing through my actions right now. And if you look, look on the screen, and if you look on the screen, you see it just jumped to the next song. It just jumped to the verse. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. Okay, now the verse. Clean parts. So obviously it's a little dirty, but I can always do it on the fly and I can just make a new one. So now I'm on my outro. So it's got my intro now and I'm playing what I normally do, which is dope. So it's just like that. Really, really easy. It creates polish, it creates fluidity. So you don't have to think about every song that you do. Um, in this case, a couple of things that you need to know about a couple of quirks. One of the things is, is as, as you're recording, um, once you're done, Unlike a real macro editor, you can't go in and then change the file itself. So you can't go in like, oh, I, I, came in, I came in too late here or I hit the wrong button. You actually have to record the whole thing again. So you can't just say, oh, let's kill Q.4 that I did and I'll just re-record the four right on the right point. You can't do that. Um, but like I said before, pretty easy, um, pretty easy to use. It's actually one of my favorite, favorite plugins. And um, I think that more people should utilize it and have better sets. Um, and I'm sure there's many other things, but for me, I, I utilize it this way. Just real straightforward, something that actually people would do in the, co in the context of actually DJing. Most people aren't gonna break out to, you know, some super fly break beats or anything like that, but they will create new edits for their tracks. And instead of having to always be on top of, oh God, that's where this part comes in. I gotta make sure I'm ready. 
but just create the action and never have to think about it again. Um, so that's it guys, hope you guys enjoyed this quick tutorial. I don't know how quick it is, we'll have to see once I, once I do all my edits. But um, once again guys, thank you guys for stopping by my channel. I know there are many other channels that you could be watching if you chose to watch mine and I appreciate it. So once again guys, always a pleasure. And if I don't talk to you later, we'll talk soon. Peace. Friday popping, you already know. I'm just getting ready for Friday popping.